Welcome to Getting It Right with Google. My name is Noel Nissen. I am the IT manager for Remax Western Canada. Um, today I have with me Chris Jamison, my esteemed colleague, who is the web services uh, training coordinator for Remax Western Canada. And we are going to take you through a few of the steps on getting it right with Google today. Now, uh, to set the tone, we're actually going to start off with a little video that will help illustrate the challenge. How many of you feel it's kind of a challenge going to the next level with technology? Anybody feel that way? Okay, we're going to start with a little video that is going to help illustrate the challenge of going to that next cutting edge technology. Um, now, keep in mind though that the video has a little bit of subtitles on there, but because uh, it, it's in a different language, but you should still be able to get the gist of it even if you can't read the subtitles, but uh, yeah, take a watch. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, there are Yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, I've done something all formula. Yeah, I'm done. It's hard. So we're going to take a look at it. Let's see what we're going to do. Yeah. So we're going to come in here. No, we're going to leave it there. Have you tried to open it? Det er åpnet den, altså hvis det hadde vært så enkelt, så hadde jeg jo ikke tilkalt helpdesk, hadde jeg vel? Nei, det er ikke sant. Bra, vi skal bare en fan. Nei, det skal være fort og klikk, det skal vi se. Du bare gjør der. Sånn, da er vi i gang. Ja, altså så langt kom jeg også. Ok. Men så stoppet det opp, og så var jeg redd for at noe av teksten skulle forsvinne, så jeg turte ikke å gå videre. Å ja, ok. Nei, men du skjønner at inni her, så ligger det kanskje flere hundre sider med lagre tekst. Så for å komme videre, så tar du et tak i et ark, på en måte her, og så blar du over på neste side, og da fortsetter teksten der. Jeg blar, altså? Du blar, ja. Men jeg skal tilbake da. Ja, da bare blar du tilbake igjen. Ta tak der, og så er du tilbake til den teksten du hadde sagt. Ok, så den slutter der, og så... Så fortsetter den der, ja! Ok, men når jeg skal avslutte for dagen, hva gjør du da? Da bare slår du sammen permene. Ja? På den måten der. Sånn. Der er lukket her, ligger alt lagret inni der. Jeg ser ikke at du kan miste noe av teksten her nå. Nei, alt ligger lagret inni her nå. I tilfellet å sette fyr på, eller ja, det er kanskje litt sannsynlig. Ja, ok. Nei, for det er noe med det å fikse at når du har holdt på med skriftruller, så tar det litt grann tid å konvertere til å bla i en bøk. Ja. Ja, det har jeg holdt til. Ja, men du er en ting før du går. Vi må bare gå igjennom en gang til. Jeg åpner sånn, og så, hva er det du kalte det? Blar. Jeg blar. Blar videre. Blar frem og tilbake. Og når jeg er ferdig, så bare lukker jeg den. Flott, litt der. Kjempefin. Nei, men du, vei, vei, vei. Ikke sant? Nå er den sånn igjen, nå får jeg ikke åpne den. Så det er ikke like gyldig det, altså? Åpne fra den siden der, sånn. Der. Der er den åpne. Ja, vel. Har du en kreft manualen, eller? Manualen? Det skal følge med som manualen, så bruker vi en ledning. Den sikter den der. Der vet du. Å ja, den er alt sammen. Ja, men det er ikke sant, der har du samme problemet. Får den ikke opp? Åpne den opp. Ok, det skulle vi kanskje tenke på. Så. We've all been in that situation where we're all trying to figure out the next technology. Now, uh, Google, we're here to talk a little bit about Google and getting it right with Google and basically what you can do to get your site going with it. Um, Google has become a verb in our society, right? Like, we're at the point now where you want to know something, you just say, let's just Google it. Right? We've almost even actually assigned like a personality to it, right? It's like we, 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 we see, you know, let's just ask our good friend Google. The other day, my son walked up to me. My son's 10 years old and he has that little twinkle that only... 10 year old boys have when they want to do something and they, you know, they get that little grin on their face. My dad, my, my son says to me, Dad, do you know why fire trucks are red? I said, no, I, I don't. He walks up to the computer, he doesn't even touch it. He walks up to the computer and he says, okay Google, why are fire trucks red? According to Wattpad, because fire trucks have eight wheels and four people on them, and four plus eight is twelve, and there are twelve inches in a foot, and a foot is a ruler, and Queen Elizabeth was a ruler, and Queen Elizabeth was also a ship, and the ship sailed the seas, and there are fish in the sea, and fish have fins, and the... The end of that says that the, uh, the fins fought the Russians, the Russians are red, and that's why fire trucks are red. <laughs> My son did that. And that's just using Google. We talk to Google now like he's our friend. He's our friend that we basically put in our pocket, right? Maybe I'll put him in my chat. So, 
keeping in mind with where we're going with, with uh, technology, let me think of this. Have any of you ever been on Google and you started searching for something and you didn't, didn't find what you were looking for? You've ever gone searching around, you're trying to find a website, you're trying to find some piece of information, and you couldn't find it. Anybody have that, ever have that situation? How, is that frustrating? Okay. Now, take a, think about the flip side of that. Have any of your clients gone onto Google and found information about you that you don't even know exists about you? They, somebody pointed out, oh, I found your name on Yellow Pages, and you're like, what? I'm on Yellow Pages? Right? Anybody ever had that happen before? This, is, this session that we're going to be talking about is basically going to cover it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you 10 tips over the next little while, 10 tips to get it right with Google. So starting with number 10, you want to get some simple URLs. That's right, so simple URLs. Um, we all have a domain that leads to our website, right? There are good domains and there's bad domains. And this is just a simple thing that you can do off the start to uh, help drive traffic to your site. Uh, we've got a couple examples up there on the screen of uh, the first one's a bad domain name, right? Um, it's really long, it's difficult to remember, um, it's gonna be hard for you to write down for your clients. Um, it's just not a good domain name, right? So you wanna try and leverage a good domain name. We have uh, some examples there, yourname.com. Um, there are some guidelines to creating good domains. You wanna use short dictionary words that describe the service that you have, right? So you can create those domains um, th as a simple rule and a simple test for whether you've got a good domain. We suggest, you know, can your URL fit on a trucker hat, right? If it does fit on the trucker hat, it's probably short enough, simple enough, um, that it's gonna be a good domain. Um, one other thing that you can do is you can actually go to uh, websites like, um, there's one here which is networksolutions.com, um, and they'll actually rate your domain name. So you can go there, plug in your domain, uh, click the submit button, and it's gonna come back and score your domain. Um, how you stack up against the rest of the domain similar to that. So it's a good idea to go and test your domain. Um, another thing that you can do uh, is you can buy um, other URL extensions. So if you've got um, you know, chrissellshomes.com, do you have .ca, .org, .net? Um, one of the new uh, URL extensions that's just come out recently is the Realtor extension. Anybody here have a .realtor? Yep. Yeah. Right? Okay. But the nice thing about those is you actually have to be a realtor, correct? Yeah. To get that. So there's some credibility, some trust, and we're actually going to talk about uh, online trust later. So a good idea to uh, register these other domains. You're talking about $5 uh, a year in some cases for these extra domains. So it's really worth your while to go in through uh, and register them. Also common misspellings. How many people here have ever typed in YouTube with two U's and ended up on the site? Ever? Two T's? You might not have even known that you did it. But if there are common misspellings for your domain name, pick up those as well, and it's gonna mean a little bit of extra traffic to the site. So, number nine, get some relevant content. Okay, relevant content, what do we mean by that? There's actually a couple of different ways to get relevant content. Basically, relevant content is any content that has to do with what you are actually trying to accomplish, okay? What is the page that I'm on trying to tell me? What content is on there that'll help me understand what it is that we're trying to get to? Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do this. There's actually two things that we suggest. We actually suggest that you both curate content and create content. So let's talk about what the difference between those is. Curating content means you're actually pulling in information from outside sources to share on your website and your social channels and other places. So you can actually go out, find other people's things, and put them on your website, okay? Now, the one thing I do want to be careful that I've mentioned to you guys is don't plagiarize, okay? Don't be going and grabbing, you know, copy-pasting someone's text and putting it on your website and crediting yourself. If you pull something from someone else, make sure you credit that person for whatever it is that you're pulling. But bring content from other places. What that does for your customers and what it does for Google is it allows your customers and Google to look at you going, this person is actually posting things that are relevant to me in my position or what I'm trying to do, trying to buy a house, and it will then help Google and help that customer see you as one of those sources that they can go to for good stuff. Um, there's actually a couple of different apps out there that will help you with those things. Things like, uh, there's a, a, an app called Feedly, there's another one called Flipbook. There's a few of them out there. Some of you may have found a couple others that work well for you and that's great. 
what these apps will do is they actually give you the ability to, they're kind of like an online magazine. You can just use them right on your iPad or whatever you want. And as you start to like and share different articles that are coming into Feedly, it will then start to gather that information and go, okay, this is the kind of stuff they like to share. This is the kind of stuff they like to put on their post. So we're just going to suggest more stuff that has to do with that. So as you work with it, it actually narrows down and it cuts down the amount of time you have to spend every day trying to find relevant content. So these things will help you do that. Oh, other... no, I just want to mention, 3Max Western Canada Facebook page, 3Max Western Canada blog is another excellent place for content. I know the advertising department's posting all sorts of stories uh, and shareable content there every day. So, I'm sure Right, that. exactly. The other part of it is creating your own content. Now, this is going to be a little bit more involved. This is the part that takes you a little bit more time. And we're going to talk a little bit about time, and you know, kind of your invested time a little bit later, but we want to talk about creating stuff. And so you want to, first of all, start by, you know, making sure you start blogging, making sure you're creating content through multimedia, using video and things like that. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you update that on a pretty regular basis using unique content. We're saying we talked about, you know, bringing stuff in from outside, but we also want to create stuff that is from you specifically. Okay, you want to create information that is uh, really using keywords that are local to who you are, to what you're doing in the marketplace that you're doing it in. Local content is king. You've heard this saying, content is king, but local content is king. What you're posting, if it has to do with the, your consumer's neighborhood, if it has to do with a park nearby, if they're, if, you know, uh, you've heard the stat, stat before that people are 91% more likely, I think it's millennials, millennials are 91% more likely to work with you if you are involved in cause marketing, right? They're 91% more likely. Well, your millennial or, or that person, if you're posting things on your website that says, here's all the different things that I'm involved in in my community, here's the Children's Miracle Network event that's going on at the park just down, down the street, people want to see that on your website, okay? Local content. So, just to give you an idea, I wanted to give you five quick tips on how you can create some very relevant content for your website so that it's not very difficult for you to do. This is all stuff you can do and it should only take you just a little while to do. So first of all, you want to make it personal, okay? Not personal about you, personal about them, okay? It, a lot of us will stand up and say, I'm this, I'm the best realtor, I can do this, I can do that. But what you want to do is say, hey, you have a need. I can help you. You have this to sell. You have a house to sell, we can sell your house. And use the words you, your, you guys, stuff like that, a lot. That way people will start feeling like, hey, this has to do with me. It's, it's, it's uh, relevant to, per to them personally. Second, get straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush. A lot of us like to write. A lot of us like to talk, okay? We like to just go on these nice stories and diatribes about things, but sometimes the consumer, they're looking for something very specific and they want to get it fast. Yeah, on any website, you have less than 10 seconds to get the information that that person wants to them, otherwise they're moving to another website. So you want to make sure that you're getting straight to the point, getting the information to them that they're looking for. So if I'm putting a website up, or uh, if I'm putting a page on my website that has to do with the, community, the Children's Miracle Network, I'm actually going to make sure that my first paragraph and the pictures and the video that's right there all talk about involvement in the Children's Miracle Network, how much I've personally raised, and that kind of stuff. So that it's very direct to the point so that the customer knows exactly what they're getting. Third, make sure you have clear calls to action, okay? If you're doing a video, you're going to want to make sure these people are, you, you, a couple times in that video or, or something, say, hey, please don't hesitate to call me. Or, or even better, don't even use the words, don't hesitate. Feel free to call me and call me at this number, call me at, or email me at this address. Same thing in your text on your website. Make sure that your, uh, that your contact information is available on every single page on your website. Okay? A lot of us will have a contact me page on my website, right? That kind of thing. But what you want is you want at the bottom, below everything else, you want to have your contact information available on every page of content, on every listing, on every article that you post, on everything. So that those people, when they're looking for something, they just scroll down and they find it, they click on it. One of the things we found with Remax.ca is at the bottom of every page on Remax.ca, we have our head office phone number and email address and all that stuff. We get a ton of calls on listings and all kinds of stuff from that being at the bottom of every page. And we realize that, hey, we've got to have your information on there. So make sure your contact information is on everywhere. Clear calls to action. Uh, number four, avoid jargon and industry terms, okay? A lot of you have a number of designations and things like that, and those are great to show other realtors. They're things to tell you, I know more, I know more about real estate than you do. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to confuse the client with those things. 
You don't want them to feel like, oh, they're talking about something. How many of you ever talked to the tech guy in the office, and the tech guy starts talking about RAM and megabytes and all that stuff, and you just smile and nod at him, and you have no idea what he's talking about, right? Well, don't do that to your clients. If you don't like getting it from the tech guy, don't do it to your clients, because your clients don't know every term that has to be with real estate. Make sure you're using simple language. Things. One of the things that we always like to joke about is always go to a grade four level. Always go to a grade four level. Everyone understands grade four level, okay? Uh, finally, last point, present a problem and a solution. In whatever content you're creating, whether it's on a video or whatever, the problem is you have a house to sell. The solution is I'm gonna sell it for you, right? Dead simple, clear, to the point, gets, a, gets the point across, and it's giving them, hey, you've got this issue, I've got the solution for you. That always helps people go, hey, yeah, if this guy could sell me else, great, perfect, right? Um, I know that there's a, a, another brokerage, or there's sometimes you'll find in some of your cities, there's other uh, real estate agents that'll say, they actually, right on their advertising, they'll say, your house will sell in 90 days or we'll, or we'll buy it for you, right? That's problem solving. They're presenting a problem and solving it in one little ad. Now, I'm not saying everybody should go do that, but that's a great example of being able to do that, okay? All right, number eight, get keywords. Get keywords, okay. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about keywords. We've got some um, AdWords experts in the front of the audience here, so I hope I get it right. Uh, anyway, um, with, uh, with keywords, you've probably all heard the term keyword before, um, and these are, these are the words on your website that are gonna help grab traffic. Uh, they're words that are gonna get typed into search engines when people are looking for you, so they could be things like real estate agent in Vancouver. Um, they could be more specific, uh, what we call long uh, tail keyword searches, which would be something like, um, a luxury specialist in Langford um, would be a long tail keyword search. So um, we suggest that you focus on those long tail keywords as opposed to the sort of uh, high level keywords because there's gonna be less competition uh, for those. So the way to approach this, there's two ways that you can go. You could use a service like Google AdWords where you're gonna actually pay uh, to get the clicks to your website. So uh, with Google AdWords, you can actually go in there, create an account, um, they'll help you create ads, choose keywords, all that sort of stuff, and start driving traffic to your website. But this is pay-per-click. So someone sees an ad, they click on it, they go to your website, and uh, hopefully they call you. Um, the other way to go about it is with organic um, keywords. So these are keywords that are actually built right into the content of your website. Um, and what you want to do is just spread, spread uh, these keywords throughout your website. So, we suggest going after the organic stuff, it's stuff that you can sit down and do yourself. And just to give you an idea, um, in the past at Remax Western, we've had a large Google AdWords uh, budget um, that we have recently started directing into the uh, website development to, get, to uh, get more organic search traffic. So it's a long-term solution. It's gonna cost less in the long run. Um, and there's a few things that you wanna think about when you are doing your uh, AdWords. The first thing is, you can go and create a free account at Google AdWords and use their AdWords tool. So you can go in there, you think, you know, I might want to do a Victoria Luxury Home Specialist. So you go, you plug in your keywords, and it's going to rate those keywords and score them for you. Uh, it's going to tell you how competitive those keywords are. So if, you know, there's a thousand other agents all in Victoria all competing for that, it's going to be hard. It's going to show you how often they get searched, so the search volume. Um, and it's also going to provide you with a list of other keywords that you might not have thought of. And then you can go back to the website and build those in. Um, so there's really three key things that you want to think about when you're choosing keywords for your website. And it's hard. You get this big list and you think, wow, there's a hundred different options here. Which keywords are for me? Um, and what you want to do is just use common sense. Out of a list of a hundred keywords, are there any that speak to you in the business that you do in particular? Those are good. The other thing that you want to look at is the search volume and the competition, okay? So uh, keywords like Realtor in Victoria is going to be uh, searched a lot, there'll be high volume, but it's also going to be very competitive, right? So you're better off going for long tail keyword searches, those three or four word keywords um, combinations um, where there's going to be less competition for them. Some of those things that, to keep in mind that AdWords tool is free to use and you can, even though if you're not planning on paying for AdWords, you can still use the tool to come up with the organic keywords that you want to spread throughout your content. So regardless of whether you buy AdWords or not, you can still use the tool to make your website rank better. Yeah. So number seven, get some backlinks. Okay, so what are backlinks? 
Backlinks simply are basically links on other websites that point back to your website. The idea is that you want other websites out there referencing your website, making you appear to be the expert in your area. That's really what you're looking for. They must be relevant to your content, however. And your content and your backlinks should point to the content on your pages, not to the actual main homepage of your website. You want those backlinks pointing into the actual content that you're trying to deliver them to. So whenever you share something on social media, you know, you want to have an article that you have just posted to your website or an article that you're, or a, something, you know, a listing that you wanted to post. Don't post a link back to just your main website. Make sure you point back to that article itself. So you're driving traffic to your website, but you're driving them to exactly what they want to do. One of the worst things that happens is if many times, everybody had this experience where you go on, you, you click a link on, on some page, and it delivers you not to the content that you want, but to the actual home page, and it expects you to go and find that content. What kind of experience is that? It's not very nice, is it? It's very, very frustrating. So we want to make sure that you're driving traffic back to the specific relevant content. Okay? Uh, a couple of things that you should be looking at is making sure that any other sources out there that you can are getting back to you. So <coughs> basically, some examples of this. Your Remax.ca profile. Okay? Every one of you has a profile page on Remax.ca, and we allow you to tell us what website we want, you want us driving traffic to. Remax.ca is a massive website. As Elton mentioned earlier today, it is the leading real estate agency website in Canada. We're just following Realtor.ca, that's it. But against all the comp competition, we're the leading website. So we get four, well, since we've launched it, we've had 40 million visits to the website. 40 million visits. I, I don't want to brag, no, but it's about 200,000 per 200,000 per day. That's just amazing that we're getting that kind of, and a certain percentage of that is going, looking for you as the agent. When they pull up your name and your information, what website address on the link that says visit my website, what address are we pointing to? Tell us and we'll make sure we deliver content to you. Do you think Remax.ca is a pretty good thing if we're driving traffic to you? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Uh, make sure that your office as well, your office website is pointing traffic to you as well. Every one of your offices has a, has a you know, page where it lists, here's all of our realtors. And on those list of all of our realtors, there should be a page for you or a link for you that says visit my website. Make sure your, website, your office website is pointing traffic to you. If you are a member of your local chamber of commerce, uh, anybody here a, local, a member of your local chamber? Oh, awesome. They, every one of your chambers has a website. And your website should be on their website. Your, your, a link to your website should be on their website. You should be linking to them and they should be linking back to you. It creates a nice link and the local chamber of commerce, Google views that as like the authority for your city as who and what does what service. So if you're linked to your local chamber of commerce and they're pointing it back to you again, Google sees that and goes, hey, this person's up there because their chamber says they're real estate professional. Uh, any real estate blogs that you may run yourself or that you may be involved with or may be referenced from other uh, cities, from other people around you, make sure they're linking back to you as well. Um, if you're back talking about our content there, if you're curating content and creating content and those other blogs are taking that content and posting, on, posting what you've created on their sites, they're going to provide a link back to you as well. So that's also going to create backlinks back that are going to help you out a lot. Uh, local real estate magazines. Now we don't think of it in terms of offline as much, but yeah, every if you got a local real estate magazine, they've also got a website, right? If you're involved in that local real estate magazine, they've got a website you should be linked back to on that website. That's one of those things to keep in mind as well. Uh, your virtual tour links. Here's a really good one. How many of you do virtual tours? Awesome, right? If you're doing virtual tour lists, Instead of pointing a link back to the video itself, why not post a link back to the page on your site where the video is hosted? So when somebody clicks that virtual tour link, the link is going to take them back to your site to watch the video rather than taking them just to the video that's sitting on YouTube or somewhere else. So these are ways of being able to create backlinks that might be able to help you uh, bring traffic from other sources to you. All right, number six, get video. Okay, so uh, video is a really powerful thing on the internet. Uh, everybody knows, we've heard a lot about, you know, pictures with a thousand words, videos with a thousand pictures. Um, this is a little statistic here that shows that 73% of homeowners say they're more likely to do with a real uh, business with a realtor who's offering video service. So, 
Um, it's something that we encourage. It's going to help generate traffic to the website as well. And we've got a few uh, suggestions here for video. Hi, I'm a video. Wow, you've been around for ages. Yes, but you also know that... Right, but if the vast majority of people that browse the web prefer a video, why not use more videos? No, that's not true. Making videos today is fast and inexpensive. And did you also know that... Yes! Well, no, but my message sticks much better. No wonder why video is so powerful. I just wish people could see your frustration right now. So, uh, video is actually um, one of the most requested features um, of a product listing. So it's what people are looking for. They want to have video. Um, incidentally, slideshows are the least desired. Fortunately, we're all using those far too often. So, um, you can do a lot with video by leveraging tools like uh, YouTube, right? You can go to YouTube, create yourself a YouTube channel, um, upload all your videos there. One of the things that Noel was talking about was embedding those videos to your website. So once they're loaded onto YouTube, um, they've made it really easy for you to embed. You can go to your YouTube channel, left, right click on your video, um, and there's an option there that's copy embed text. And it's literally, you can copy that text and go to your website and paste it in um, and build that video into your website. <clears throat> so YouTube's made it pretty easy. Um, and there's a few other things that you can do. You can create a video on each listing, um, the new Remax.ca profiles are actually going to have a video introduction spot. So when we launch the new website, whenever it was, Elton said we're going to do that, um, you'll be able to upload your YouTube video and it's going to appear right there on your profile as well. Um, <coughs> make sure videos are relevant. Uh, use the annotations. If you're doing YouTube videos, uh, there are little annotations that you can put onto the video that the user can click on to go to third-party content um, or external sources. So, um, if you're doing a video, you can actually uh, suggest that they subscribe to your channel and you can put an annotation in the video that comes up and prompt them to click on. So it's a call to action. Um, you can also direct them off to your website at the end of the video if you want to you know, send them there. When you create a video, uh, utilize the closed captioning. So when you upload a video to Google, um, or to YouTube I should say, uh, one of the things you can do is turn on the closed captioning and it's actually going to go through and do a voice recognition of the uh, full video and add the closed captioning text, which is great because now your video is going to be indexed and the text is also going to be indexed with it. So it's just more SEO juice for your video. Um, of course, once you have these videos, you can do all sorts of extra stuff. Uh, anybody here doing video email yet? A few people, are you having success with that? Moderate. Yeah, moderate. Bomb bomb. Bomb bomb. Anybody else here using bomb bomb? Just a few. Not too long ago, I did a session with, uh, actually with Michael Thorne. Yeah, I don't know if Michael's in there. He's probably somewhere. Um, but uh, I was talking to Michael for a little while, and then when we finished up, he actually just sent me like a thank you note for, for talking to him, and he did it through video. So I opened up the email, and boom, there's a video, and he's on his boat. I was a little bit jealous, but he's like, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about this thing. And I'm telling you, it was like such a personal touch that it was like, hey, this is awesome. Like, it was a really good thing to have. So. Okay, so I'm going to share a little story with you on this next one. This isn't just a plug. Um, this is my little brother. He moved to Japan a couple of years ago and he decided to start doing a video blog when he moved over to Japan. Uh, so he was going to do short little videos and talk about uh, why he moved to Japan, the experience, the interview, getting an apartment, all that sort of stuff. Stuff that people in Western, uh, you know, Canada or whatever would want to know when they moved to Japan. So he started this channel uh, two years ago and he started posting videos. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is this video up in the top corner. This is one of uh, his most popular videos. It was posted four months ago, and it's had 79,000 views. So, he started this channel a couple of years ago, and you can see he's posting videos. They have 2,000 views, 3,000 views, whatever it is. That video is nothing but a, but a walkthrough of his apartment. It's not really that exciting, but you see a little bit of personality come out in the video. Uh, it's short and it's sweet. And sure enough, four months later, it's got 79,000 views. The next video on popularity after a full year has only had 25,000 views. 
So if you get the video right, and you find a format that works, um, you'll have success with it, and it, it can go viral. So you should take advantage of that. There's no uh, similarity between Chris and his brother, eh? So look a little bit. <laughs> so number five, get social. All right. One of my favorite topics to talk about for sure, social media. Being social, how can social media, one of the things we've heard long ago was that Google does not index social media websites. But that doesn't mean that it can't help your clicks. It doesn't mean that it can't help your website gain traction. So one of the things you want to be doing is you want to be using your social media to drive traffic to you. You want to be posting things on your page that, that uh, you know, basically make sure you got people, or you got, sorry, content that's coming back to you. Okay? Use your Facebook business page. I used to teach people that it didn't matter if you use your Facebook business page or not, but now it's become a very, it's far more critical to have a Facebook business page. Facebook business page allows you to be able to post all kinds of content. People can like you without having to request a friendship. They can follow what you're doing without having to request a friendship and you uh, basically saying, yes, I'll, friend, I'll, friend, uh, I'll accept you as a friend. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're posting information to your Facebook page, allowing people to get back to you. Again, post relevant content that is stuff that they're going to be interested in, stuff that's going to help your clients. Include links, those, those links back to your website in your posts, okay? So what I would do is if it's a, if, even if it's a content that's coming from another site and I'm posting it on my website, what I would do is click the share button on that other site, share it to my Facebook page, and then in the comments, I'd be like, hey, here's some in information that a few of you might find interesting. If for more information or if you'd like to talk to me over this, please visit my website at and put my website address because you're creating a getting back link and you're also driving, telling people, come to me for more information. So you're actually help, getting social to help you do that. The other thing is get other people using social media for you. This is a really great way to, to help yourself a lot. And this is one of the things I love to teach people. Anybody who's been in my, any of my classes, this is one of the things we go through. Add a share button to every one of your listings. Make sure that on your website, your listings all have a share button, okay? Share on Facebook, tweet on Twitter, post on Pinterest, whatever you, whatever share social media things you do, and even the social media networks you're not on. Okay? Make sure the share buttons for those other social media networks are there. Because what's going to happen is this. Let's just say that, um, Joyce, you have Facebook? Yeah. How many friends do you have on your Facebook? Just, well, guess. No. Not many. Okay. <laughs> let's say 200. <laughs> we'll just go with 200. Okay? So let's say Joyce has 200, uh, 200 uh, friends on her Facebook. Now, Joyce decides to post on her Facebook page one of her listings. Now. If any of you are like me with your Facebook, you'll start scrolling for your Facebook and you'll see a certain set of uh, things come up on your wall. You close Facebook, come back five minutes later because we all do this, right? We all close it and then come back five minutes later. We open it up and it's a completely different set of things on the wall than was there five minutes ago. Anybody had that happen? Anybody like me? Okay. All right. So, realistically, if Joyce posts her listing on her Facebook wall at 8 a.m., which incidentally is one of the most popular times for people to be on Facebook, right before they start work and 8 p.m. right after they finish dinner. So that's an interesting time for you to post your stuff. Just an interesting, cool little tip for you. Um, so if she posts her listing at 8 a.m. on there, I, how many of the people on her friends list are actually on looking at that? Let's be generous and say 30% of those people actually see that listing come up. We'll be generous. It's probably closer to like 5%, but I'm going to be really generous here. 30% people see that post. Now, of that 30%, how many of those are actually going to engage with that listing? Any guesses? Maybe a couple, maybe, okay. So, think about this from the other side. If you've got a share button on every one of your listings on your website, think about it this way. I, no one listen, I'm going on, and I'm looking for a house to buy, okay. I land on Joyce's website. I look at one of the listings, one of the awesome listings she's got in, in, in uh, Regina. And I was going to say Saskatchewan, then my brain went to Saskatoon, and then, yeah, so Regina. One of the awesome places she's got, Regina. And I'm looking at it, and I go, you know what, this isn't really for me, but my friends Jeff and Sheila, they're looking for a place, and this kind of looks like that. So I click on her, her listing, I go share, and I go, hey, Jeff and Sheila, and I tag them in the listing, in my post to Facebook. Hey, Jeff and Sheila, take a look at this property that I found. It's not what I'm looking for, but it might be something you might be interested in. Now, here's the thing. I've got 500 friends on my Facebook wall. Sheila's got 800 on hers, and Jeff's probably upwards of 1,200 on his. So now, by having that share link on your listing, 
what that does is it now exposes your listing potentially to 2,000 people without you having to do anything, right? Make sure every one of your listings has that share button on it. The other thing is, when you're posting content, try to think about your clients and mention or tag those clients in your social posts. Your clients love being named. If you have permission to do that, talk to them earlier, say, you know, I like to post things on social media, do you mind if I send you things and mention you occasionally or whatnot? Many times they'll be like, yeah, by all means, right? Post and connect with them. Say, you know, like, uh, one of the greatest things I've seen a number of times, uh, a number of realtors do this, and it's fabulous because it gets shared like crazy. You post on your social media, congratulations to Joe Smith and whatever, if they give you permission again like that, congratulations on your new home purchase. And you have a picture of them standing in front of their house. I'm telling you, they will go onto your Facebook page and they will share the heck out of it, sharing your name with every single person they know, right? It's an awesome way to get your name out there. Yeah, it's not having to do anything with your website, but when your website, when your information is all on that particular post that you said, hey, so-and-so, congratulations on your new home purchase, and you have your website address in that, in that thing, your website address is getting shared to everybody out there. So it's a very, very good way to make sure you've got uh, some, get some boost to your website. All right, number four, get trust. Get trust, right? This is a big one. I know that uh, they were talking about trust this morning. 90% um, of consumers read online reviews before they make a buying decision. Um, so we're talking about online trust here. And I think we've got one other stat. 92% uh, of consumers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. So how much people trust you online uh, is important. Now, uh, building trust in person isn't difficult. You know, you can, uh, you can look at somebody in the eye, you can read their body language, um, you can speak to them on the phone and you can hear the tone in their voice, uh, but when you go online, things are a little bit different. It's not difficult, it's just different. So there's a few things that you can do to manage that online reputation and to build some trust. Um, the two things, that, or the two ways that we're uh, suggesting that you approach it are with A, agent rankings. So we've partnered with uh, Rank My Agent. Uh, you've heard about that a little bit. And this is a site where you can uh, send your clients where they can actually review you um, in a really comprehensive review. So it's not like Google where they give you five stars and they make a comment. This is a system where you know, they're going to break down what were your communication skills like? Um, what were your negotiation skills like? All sorts of different categories. And these reviews are actually tied to a transaction, right? So it's not like someone can just go onto the site and review you. These are um, a little more trusted. Um, another thing that you can do is we've also partnered with 2x4. Um, um, if anybody had a chance to hear from Adam Lerner about 2x4, and what that is is it's a system where uh, the public can go to post questions, and you as a realtor can go and answer those questions. Your answers to the questions can then be upvoted based on people's opinion of, uh, of your answer and everything else. Um, so you can actually become known as uh, the expert in a particular topic. So there's two things. You can go and you can become an expert and provide advice that people will start to trust. Um, and you can also collect reviews from a reputable site like, uh, like Rank My Agent or Google as well. Uh, some people trust Google. Okay, um, link these reviews to your site, right? This is another thing that we sometimes forget to do. Um, you can go onto your website, create a testimonials page, and link those reviews back to your website. I know uh, I did a presentation yesterday with the Stone Sisters, and they actually have the buttons from Rank My Agent embedded right on their website, so when you go to the home page of the site, there's a spot that you can provide feedback for them right there. Um, so make sure that you link to the site, and don't forget to leverage that 800-pound gorilla, right? We have the Remax.ca domain. This is a, a really trusted domain. Like I said, we get about 200,000 visitors a day, and Google believes that we're a real business, and it trusts us. So when you use the website that we provide for you, which is going to be um, usually your name.remax.ca, you're leveraging the trust of that domain right off the start. So um, you'll be in better shape than if you just went out and bought your own domain. So don't forget about the Remax.ca domain. Okay, we're also going to watch now just a really short video and give you seven um, common sense ways to build trust online. Seven common sense ways that any company can do so. Unfortunately, they're not always so common. So here's number one. 
Remember, the people do business with people. Even in the online world where customers purchase through your website, remember that the website was designed by people to be used by people. So make the site easy to navigate and simple to understand. Number two, be accessible through multiple channels. In other words, you may have a great call center, but you should also have support available through other channels such as oh, email or texting uh, or even monitoring Facebook or Twitter. Number three, make contact information <laughs> available on each page of the website. Make it easy for customers to call, email, or connect with you instantly. Number four, keep telephone hold times down to a minimum. It can be frustrating for a customer to have to wait for extended periods of time. It sends the message that the company doesn't care enough to staff properly. As an alternative, consider technology that will let the customer know how long the wait time is going to be with the option of an automatic callback. Number five, when a customer contacts you via social channels, respond quickly, which means minutes, not hours or days. I mean, if I wanted my question answered two hours from now, I would have waited two hours to ask the question. Number six, share social proof. Use testimonials from happy customers to help prove trust and increase a customer's confidence to do business with you. And finally, number seven, Ask your customers to post online reviews. This shows that you have the confidence that you'll take care of your customers by delivering a great customer service experience and taking care of any problems that may arise. All right. One thing I just wanted to mention as well is that, you know, the online reviews, as Elton mentioned earlier today, online reviews is a scary thing. We've all looked at it and go, yeah, I don't know if I want all of my dirty laundry up there in front of everybody, but I want to present it from this perspective. How many of you have ever gone on looking, you know, gone for a web, uh, gone for a holiday, and you've looked at looked at Hotels.com or TripAdvisor or something like that, and you've actually read the ratings for some of those hotels? Okay. How many of you ever read? You're looking at a hotel. You're kind of excited about that hotel, and you see in the comments you get one negative. All of them are glowing, but you get one negative in there. What do you think about that one negative? Ah, that guy's just having a bad day, right? Ah, eh, just some internet jerk just having a bad day. Okay. I look at it this way. When I see a, a realtor who's gone on and, got, and asked his clients, whenever he gets a good, a great transaction, he says, hey, would you leave a review for me on such and such website? If you've got 12 reviews that are all glowing that you've asked your clients to do, they're all glowing, and then you get one negative one, that's kind of like street cred. It's kind of like saying, hey, I'm not perfect, but I'm still going to do a really darn good job for you, right? So don't be afraid of the negative reviews, especially if you go onto that service and respond with a, hey, you know, I'm so sorry that things didn't work out. Don't swear at the guy. Please never swear at anybody online. You know that everything online is open for everybody to see, right? So don't swear at the guy. Go back and say, hey, I'm sorry that things didn't work out. If there's anything I can do to make this better, please contact me. They probably never will, but anybody who's reading through those reviews sees that negative review and then your very professional response, I'm telling you, that is huge. It speaks volumes. I was doing a, when I was, first time I went to San Francisco, I was looking for a hotel. I found one where all good reviews. One guy came and said, we had bed bugs. Your initial reaction is like, ooh, I don't know if I want to stay there. The hotel responded immediately afterward and said, yes, we had one situation where a client came in, brought bed bugs with him. We had the entire room fumigated and cleaned. We've had it tested several times since then. Restored my faith in that hotel, just like that. So, good way to go. All right, we're down to the, the three now. Uh, get responsive. Get responsive. So what does responsive mean? Responsive uh, is basically the ability for your website to match the size of the screen that it's being viewed on. Okay. How many of you ever had this experience? Ever, anybody ever gone into a website and found a website that's not formatted for this gap? Right? What kind of experience is that? You have like pinch and zoom and scroll. Okay. Uh, Rona, I, a, couple week, or a couple years ago, my wife and I started renovating our kitchen. We are still renovating our kitchen. Um, but we decided that we were going to go to Rona. I live like a block, two blocks from Rona. So we decided we were going to walk down there and, and go look at stuff for our kitchen. So grab the dog. You can take your dog into Rona. It's pretty cool. Um, we take the dog. We go to Rona. We go through the turnstile. And there's actually one of those sandwich boards there that says, scan this QR code. You know those blocky QR codes. 
scan this QR code for a chance, you know, and take our survey for a chance to win $1,000. Like a little good little tech guy, I pull out my phone, scan the QR code. It takes me to the survey. The survey is on a page that is not formatted for this. Okay, so it's got all these questions. And the first question is, which department are you visiting in Rona today? So I pull out my, I click on the little drop down. I have to pinch and zoom in to get to it, right? You get to zoom right in. I click the drop down, the drop down goes down off the bottom of the page. How many departments are there in Rona? It's like a 10,000 or something. So I'm like scrolling through. How many questions on that survey do you think I answered? Zero. I didn't answer the survey. In hindsight, I probably should have because I probably would have been the only one. But, <laughs> and I would have won the thousand dollars. But either way. So the idea is make, you, you want your website to be able to fit on whatever screen you're looking at it. And responsive, there's two ways to do this with, mo uh, with websites. You can either have a mobile version of your page where all of your pages have a secondary copy that's just formatted for these screens. Or you can build the today's way of doing it is building your website to just resize itself so that all the content just stays but just goes into the size of the frame that you're looking at it on. Okay? Um, Google just recently, just this year, earlier this year, posted a, a notice to everyone saying that if you want your website just to even show up in the rankings, you have to have a mobile friendly website. The reason why is because your website is, is uh, more people are on, on mobile than ever before. Now, our promise to you is all Remax websites that we create and that we are putting out there, including the websites that we've created for you for, through Lee Street, all have responsive designs available to them. And here's, if you already have a website, a couple things you should keep in mind. If you're gonna to talk to your, web, your website developer, they should be able to uh, change your website and make those changes for you without any trouble, okay? They should be able to get your website looking that way. Now, there may be an investment in, involved depending on the age of your website, depending on what's, what your website, how it's set up, but you should be able to do that and just, just explore those options, okay? Now, I do want to show you a quick little video about... Did you know there are more mobile phones in the world than there are toothbrushes? In some countries, there are more mobile subscriptions than there are people. 91% of all U.S. citizens have their mobile device within reach 24-7. It takes 26 hours for the average person to report a lost wallet. It takes 68 minutes for them to report a lost phone. In 2012, there was a 55% increase in smartphone subscriptions. By 2015, more people will access the internet through a smartphone or tablet than a PC. The average response time to an email is 90 minutes. The average response time to a text message is 90 seconds. Almost two-thirds of Facebook's user base uses Facebook Mobile. More than 20% of global YouTube viewers come from mobile devices. More than half of the local searches are performed on a mobile device. 70% of all mobile searches result in action within one hour. Google earns $2.5 billion in mobile ad revenue annually. The mobile ad market is expected to grow to $22 billion by 2016. PayPal expected to process $10 billion in mobile payment volume in 2012. Mobile coupons are 10 times more likely to be used than traditional paper coupons. 61% of the people who use their mobile device to visit a website that was not optimized for mobile visited the website of a competitor. In 2011, the use of QR codes increased by 300%. Over 30,000 apps have been developed in the past three years. By 2015, the number of app downloads will be over 100 billion. 52% of marketers plan to create a mobile or tablet-optimized website. 41% of them hope to develop a mobile app in the near future. Do you have a mobile marketing strategy in place? So, that video is a couple of years old, but the point still stands. And there's a couple points there. The number of people expected to have mobile devices with them. And they said, in some countries, the number of mobile devices outdoes the population of the country. It's crazy. That's absolutely insane. Uh, and the other one, 61% of people who go to a website that is not mobile optimized will go to the website of a competitor. How many of you would like your customers going to a competitor website? Probably not many. All right, number two, down to the last couple. Get analyzing and make changes. All right, so you've, uh, you've done a lot of the things that we're talking about. You're starting to generate a little bit of uh, SEO, and you're wondering how you can improve it. Right? Maybe you're, uh, you've been working on it a little while, like uh, Mr. Google Doogle here in the front of the crowd, right? Um, and you want to see uh, what you can do better. So, 
Um, one of the tools that's available to you for free, again, is Google Analytics. Anybody here using Google Analytics? Okay, great, most people are. If you haven't uh, used it before, you should check it out. What happens is you can go create a free account and it's gonna give you a little piece of code that goes onto your website. Uh, once you attach that to your site, you're gonna start getting all sorts of traffic analytics. Um, you're gonna see when people come to your site, where they come from, and you're gonna see really important stuff, which is which pages do they land on? Right? Most people would probably think that your visitors come in through your homepage, but that's not true. I can tell you that on remax.ca, 85% of the traffic comes from a Google search to a listing details page. They never touch the homepage. Right? So you need to find out which pages on your website are, we call them landing pages. Where are people landing when they come to your site? So you can go in there, you can see those pages. Um, you can do more of those pages, and you're also going to see uh, the top exit pages. You can guess what that means. People come to the website on those pages, and then they exit. So you need less of that, right? I can tell you, um, my wife's in the crowd here. We helped with her website, um, and she has a neighborhood page on there, right? So in the menu at the top, you can go into neighborhoods, and there's a write-up on the local neighborhoods. A uh, little paragraph and a picture for each neighborhood in Kelowna. And I can tell you that the majority of the traffic that comes to the website lands on that page. That's their starting point, right? So you want to start looking at your site and doing some analytics, figure out what's working, what's not. Um, you can move content around. Um, it's an exceptional tool, um, so check it out if you haven't. <clears throat> number one, get invested. So our number one most important tip that you can look at this, uh, at getting right with Google, is your investment, your time investment and your money investment. Okay, and, and I know that's the scary part of this, but I want you to say this. What you put in is what you're going to get out of it, okay? Um, and I'd like to kind of point out a couple little things to keep in mind. Identify your niche, okay? Most of you, or many of you, have a niche market that you're, you're working towards. Identify the niche and put your investment money when you're working on your website and whatnot into that particular niche. Help your people find what it is that helps you sell. Who are you talking to? Um, another thing that I like to say is find out, figure out who your target audience is, okay? Who is your target audience? When we first get into real estate, we get in think, figuring to ourselves, I'm gonna sell real estate to everybody. I'm gonna sell everyone's house. And then over time you start to realize that, you know what, I just don't identify with the millennials at all. I am going after the, you know, 30 to 60 year olds or whatever. You start to figure out who your target market is. Well, most of those people, and interestingly enough, even the elderly now are using all this stuff, so you want to start targeting your website to meet those people's needs, okay? But that's going to take some time, it's going to take some money. Uh, be careful about those companies that are contacting you selling SEO and SEM. They're telling you all this great stuff. I've heard a few reports from realtors who got a phone call from a company saying, I represent so-and-so, the best company for selling search engine placement, and we're going to get you at the top one or two of the Google search results. And after like seven months, you've maybe improved a page or something like that. And it's not all that useful. So be very, very careful about those companies. Do some research. Make sure you get some credentials from them before you do that. Uh, don't pay them a whole bunch of money, especially when you take some of the tips that we've already given you over the last hour. We want to make sure that you have, you can do a lot of this stuff organically without having to spend a lot of money on those extra services. But there is going to be a certain amount of money you do need to spend. Um, Think of it in terms of whatever fits your budget versus what you're trying to accomplish, okay? If you're trying to take over the market for Edmonton, well, there's a couple of realtors in Edmonton who really have the market for websites and they have the most traffic and that's just the way it is right now. It's gonna take you, if that's your goal, great, that's awesome, but it's gonna take you a while to get there. Think about how much money you can put into it and how much you're, like, how much you're willing to spend and for the return that you're going to get. Use the things that we've talked about, the keywords, the videos, and things like that to make that happen. The other part is how much time are you going to invest in this each day, okay? It's not something that has to be hours and hours and hours. I know many of you, and probably throughout most of this session today, you were thinking to yourself, this is all great, but where am I going to find the time to do all of this? Well, can you spare 15 minutes? Can you take 15 minutes a day? Because I want you to think about this. You take 15 minutes a day, and you've put an hour a week into building your website. That's four hours every month. That's a lot of hours every year, right? So we want to get you just thinking about what kinds of things. Use those tools like Feedly and the other ones to be able to share your content. Those will help you immensely. You don't have to go scouring the internet for things. You just bring it to you and you can just share the stuff that you like. 
Use consistent information across all the different things that you're doing, okay? Make sure you're taking the time to go and find. Earlier at the beginning we asked, you know, how many of you, your clients, have gone and found information about you on sites that you didn't even know existed? Did you know that on Yellow Pages you do have a listing for your business? It's already there, whether you've looked at it or not. Many of you already on Yelp, your business is already there, whether you've looked at it or not. You should be taking a little bit of time every so often going through seeing where your name is. How many of you have ever Googled your name before? Now, um, in some cases that you've got to be careful about what you Google, right? <laughs> but you want to go in there and Google your name, find out where your information shows up. Okay? I had a lady in Lethbridge. She told me that uh, when she Googled her name, she shared a name with a porn star. <laughs> So she had to get creative as to what information was out there about her, right? She had to start being a little bit more creative. But that's just the way it goes. Make sure you're finding out where your information is. Make sure you're using consistent information across all the sites where, you're, where your name is. Um, make sure that you use the same phone number and address and email address on your social media, on the business directories, on Google Places, any, any online accounts that you can do. Make sure you go and claim those business accounts. Make sure you set yourself up and you have control over that information. Make sure it's all pointing back to where? Your website, right? Excellent. All right. Finally, very important. We don't normally think about this, but tie your online stuff to your offline stuff, okay? Make sure you're using the same look and feel, the same fonts, the same colors. Make sure that you've got the same logos on everything. I've seen a number of agents where they go and they spend $10,000 to get an amazing website done, but then their print pieces that they have are just like some weird letterhead that doesn't match their style. And even though Google can't index your flyer, people's brains index your flyer and, their, and your website. And if it ties together, it's a way better experience in the long run. So those are things that are going to help you. So all of that said, we hope that this didn't seem too overwhelming. We tried to bring it down to the simplest level for everybody because we wanted you to see that really getting it right with Google is just a little bit of effort and a little bit of time and just take a few of these simple little things and you can start working on it. Don't try to do them all at one time, okay? But also, don't be the guy who's trying to switch from a scroll to a book, right? Don't be that guy who has a hard time with that. Take some time. Figure it out, and you will do well. I just want to say thank you all so much. That's all the time we have for today. But I hope you got lots out of this session. Thank you so much.